Welcome to what I hope is set to become a new series here on Hedgeworks Motorsport. With the new British touring car season almost here, we've decided that we're going to do almost a preview and prediction show ahead of the uh, rounds of the latest quick fit British touring car season. I'll make some predictions and hopefully predict correctly of what's going to happen. Obviously it's very difficult to predict with British touring cars. We're also going to hear what uh, drivers and people that work within British touring car have to say on what they think are going to happen. And also we're going to hear what you guys at home, my fellow British touring car fans, have got to say about the racing up ahead. We'll make some predictions and have a bit of a laugh because as I say it is very hard to predict. Round one is Fruxton, that's coming up next. I'm your host Louis Hedge from Hedgeworks Motorsport. On today's show we hear what Mark Wogstoff has to say about the current team's driver lineups and of course liveries of this season. We also hear from you guys the fans in the fans prediction segment about who's going to be flying at Fruxton and to finish we'll talk to Michael Kreese about his predictions for the first weekend. But before all that, I'm going to say what I think, and oh, Fruxton, it's an interesting one. Fastest circuit on the calendar, you've got to be brave, you've got to be quick as well to do well there. And generally, it's been a very strong circuit for Hondas. They've always uh, been very strong there, won races. Think back to the second uh, visit to Fruxton in 2019, um, just after the, the summer break. A Honda won every single race that day. Sam Tordoff won race one in the older generation FK2 Civic. Uh, Josh Cook won race two. And Dan Kamish won race three. And Josh Cook is going to be strong. He won there. He's won there every time he's, he's been to Fruxton in British Touring Cars the past few years. So it's going to be very interesting. But if you think back to last year... He won a race in race three, but it was Tom Ingram in the Toyota who seemed to be strongest. He won the first two encounters fairly strongly. He had Dan Kamish right behind him in the Honda FK8, so that's definitely going to be interesting to see how the Hondas um, perform uh, this time around, as well as the Toyota. We've got two Toyotas on the grid this year, so that's certainly going to be interesting. But you've got to think it's not always fun in games for Honda. Think back to 2016 when Gordon Shedden got a puncture. And it caused quite a big incident on the start-finish straight. And that is often a talking point at Fruxton, especially when the weather is warm. Punctures. We sadly did see Michael Kreese, who we are speaking to later on in the show. He got a puncture last uh, uh, last year in race three, uh, which was a real shame, running in the top ten really strongly. And you have really got to be careful with your tyres. Who to look out for? Jake Hill has been looking very quick in testing. That's someone I'm keeping an eye on and hoping... Uh, has a fantastic race weekend. As I mentioned previously, Josh Cook won, he's, he's won loads around Fruxton, so that is definitely someone um, to keep an eye out for. He's also in the Honda FK8, um, which as I've said, is a very strong car around uh, Fruxton. Gordon Shedden, he's also in the Honda. He's going to be very interesting. He's making his British touring car return. Obviously, he last raced in touring cars in the UK in 2017. He's going to be interesting. He's looked very quick in testing, but as we all know, it's just testing. And yeah, they're probably my main three drivers I'm keeping, eye at, keeping an eye out for. Having said that, it's British touring cars. We've got a 30 car grid almost. There's so many I've missed out. And it's going to be interesting. Rear wheel drive versus front wheel drive. Let's see. Can Ash Sutton and Colin Turkington have a flying start to the season or is this a good opportunity for front wheel drive contenders like Rory Butcher, Jake Hill, Josh Cook? The list goes on. Is this a good opportunity to, for them to start, score some big points and start the season strongly? We'll have to wait and find out. It's now time to hear what Mark Wagstaff from BTCC Blueprints has to say about all the drivers, teams and liveries. Well, Mark, BTCC Blueprints, I mean... It must be a fairly busy time for you with the new season about to start. It certainly is, yes. We're um, in the process of drawing all the illustrations for our products. Um, got some of them online already. We should be all up and running with everything that uh, hopefully people will want for the coming season. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it, it must... You must be able to see with with what people are getting, you can can sort of get an idea of which liveries are popular this year. Oh yes, yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, like you at the moment, because we haven't 
at, as we speak, we haven't got everything online yet, but my suspicion will be that it's the same as when we take the, the stuff to the trade stalls. Half a dozen drivers amongst the whole grid will be particularly popular. Yeah. Um, the others, uh, you know, it's a bit like football teams, really. You know, it's no different. You know, Manchester United, Liverpool, Man City, you know, all the big teams have the biggest followings. It's the same with touring cars. Um, you've got the top sort of five, six or seven. Um, so I'm not sure that the, the actual liveries themselves actually make too much of a difference yeah. um, to how fans perceive their favourite driver. It is what it is. Um, but there are reasons for the liveries, which I think you're going to sort of chat about later. But uh, it is interesting. I mean, I was having a little brief look on our sort of back catalogue, as well as that behind me, which is yeah. all the champions. Um, and it's it's strange how this year in particular, and this is what people are commenting on, it's very, uh, it's a very sort of black and white, um, you know, set of liveries. Yeah. You know, there are, I think, a few tweaks going on um, with some, but essentially... Yeah, um, black is the new brown or the new red, whatever you want to call it. But there are periods where red has been, you know, very popular. <laughs> but for this year, um, as uh, a very well-known commentator said to me um, in an email the other night, given that we're in the age of colour and have been for 30 years, it's amazing how many are black. Yeah. But, it, you know. There are reasons behind it, but there you go. Yeah, of course. And, you know, I was, I was actually going to mention, you know, it has been a very sort of big talking point recently, uh, these past few weeks leading up to the new season and, and media day. But so many of the liveries are black. But I imagine, and, and I'm sure you, you know, you and BTCC Blueprints know uh, more about this. But I suppose a racing team, when they are coming up with their livery, Things like sponsors will have specific requirements, won't they? And and I guess there is quite a lot that goes on behind the scenes when when coming up with these liveries. And I guess it can be fairly difficult coming up with new liveries every single year. You hit the nail on the head with the sponsors. Yeah. So if you take the main sponsors for each of the teams and they're paying huge sums of money to stand out like a sore thumb on their chosen cars... And most of those companies will have a, um, you know, a company logo or a company colour. So whether you like it or not, when it comes to designing a livery, you are immediately faced with certain restrictions. So you might think, wouldn't it be great to have a yellow polka dot car on the grid? But if the main sponsor's colour is, for argument's sake, yellow, yellow on yellow doesn't stand out. So if you've got a bunch of logos um, that are predominantly white, they need to stand out on a, you know, a bold color. Yeah. And invariably from a marketing point of view, white logo stands out best on a black background. And the reverse is just as true. A black logo, you stick it on a white background. Colourful logos look a bit better on the white cars. So if you look like Uniserve, say, on the MB Motorsport ones, you've got two or three colours in their Uniserve logo, well, automatically it's best on a white background. Yeah. So you, you've you got these... I mean, the, the other the example I'll give that everyone was talking about, the Mini Challenge last year an absolute kaleidoscope of colour, yeah. which looked extraordinary on track. But I would argue a little bit that when they're going whizzing by at 100 mile an hour, in many of them, the actual company logos got lost a bit. Yeah. When you come to the British touring cars, where six-figure sums are being paid to stand out like a sore thumb, yeah. it is what it is. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you mentioned earlier about, um, you know, colour on, on with the sponsors and how important it is to stand out. I always remember, I saw fairly recently a picture of a, 
uh, the car of uh, Jade Edwards, uh, her father, Jim Edwards, and that very brightly coloured Honda. Uh, that's always very memorable, I think. You've only got to go back through history again, you know, if you look at all the champions and things yeah. um, and all the others. I mean, the one that I remember that always, I've, it's always caught me out that nobody's ever really picked up on it. It was done for a specific reason, but a couple of seasons ago, 2018, I think it was Sam Tordoff's pink yeah. car. Now, whether he was the most popular driver or not on the grid is open to debate. But in terms of what we did and product sales outstripped everything else because everyone wanted, particularly the female audiences, they wanted a pink mug. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's very interesting, isn't it? But um, but drivers, teams, who do you think we should be looking out for this weekend at Thruxton? I think for Thruxton, now I'm neutral in this, I have to be, yeah. <laughs> doing what I do. Um, but I think most neutrals are looking at experienced drivers in cars that they know. So I think as much as I'd love to be controversial, I think the likelihood is that Ash Sutton, Colin Turkington, and I was chatting to Lee and Sam, my colleagues, about this earlier today, they both feel that Gordon Shedden will play a big role as well. Yeah. So I think for Thruxton, races one and two, I think it'll be difficult to look much further than Colin, Ash, and probably Gordon Shedden as being the three to watch. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's yeah, it's good. It's gonna be it's gonna be so interesting. I think this year there's such a great mix of of different drivers, whether it's youth or experience, and lots of new cars as well. Yeah, well, I've uh, uh, knowing that we were going to do this. Uh, a few days ago, I wrote, decided I'd write down who I thought was technically a challenger for this year's championship. Yeah. I got to about 15 names and thought, well, this is silly. Yeah. How can you possibly start to narrow it down? I think there's probably five or six which probably stand out. But on top of that, there's another 9, 10, 11, 12 drivers out there who will sit on that grid, particularly as the season progresses, yeah. that will get settled into their new cars, their new teams. And uh, I think it, it's likely to be the most extraordinary championship. I've described it as I think the results over the course of the season will be as mad as a box of frogs. Yeah. It will be all over the place, leaping around, uh, which for me as a neutral will be brilliant to watch. Yeah. yeah. Do you think it'll be like one of those seasons in, we had a couple of, a few years back in 2018, where, you know, we had something silly like 16 or 17 different race winners and Colin Turkington, who did win the championship, he only won a single race. So it's going to be, I think if it is like that, it'll be even more about consistency. Yeah, my, my views on it, I've written down 20 drivers who I think will finish on podiums yeah. throughout the season. I'm not quite sure about 16 different winners, <laughs> but I certainly, in my own view, I think the results of each of the reverse grids, they will be the ones that, that are critical in who decides the championship. I think it'll be the reverse grids, yeah. not races one and two. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's been great to hear what you've got to say about, you know, the liveries, the teams, the drivers, and I hope you enjoy the first round at Froxton. I certainly am really looking forward to it, most definitely. Sadly, it'll be on uh, in front of the TV, but uh, maybe we'll get to the races later in the year. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it was great to chat with Mark and hear what he has to say, especially about those liveries, something you know, him and BTCC Blueprints obviously know lots about. 
and you can hear more of his predictions in the fans prediction segment that's coming up next. Yes, it's the time everybody has been waiting for, the BTCC fans prediction. I asked the same questions to a group of my fellow British touring car fans, and well, here are their answers. Uh, well, I'm AJ, I have the YouTube channel, Feel the Drive. Uh, my name is Rich uh, Hoyt. Uh, my name's Dominic. My name's Hayley Bristow. My name is Mark Wagstaff from BTCC Blueprints. Uh, my name's Chris, Chris Crowhurst. Uh, my name is Stuart, and I'm the presenter of Is It Fast? Uh, yeah, I'm Harry, I'm yeah, from Droitwich, near, um, near where Team Dynamics are, actually. And uh, I'm a BTCC fan, like everyone else. <laughs> and have you got a favourite British touring car driver? I'm not a loud one. There is only one driver, Colin Turkington. I have my favourite driver is Tom Ingram. Tough question. I, I mean, I like the whole the whole grid. Um, yeah, good old Jason, Jason Plato. Uh, yes, it's Colin Turkington. Yeah, um, I'm quite fond of a lot of drivers, and particularly Rob Austin. <laughs> I really like I really like Nick Nick Hamilton. Yeah, I always follow the guys who have given a lot to the series, but you know they're all great drivers. So uh, just sit back and enjoy. Current grid probably Tom Ingram, Ollie Jackson, and Robo are the three standouts for me. Uh, uh, do you know someone I've never spoken to? I really like Tom Ingram because yeah. he drives around in a Ginsters car <laughs> and who doesn't love pasties. There you go. That's yeah. gonna be that's gonna be the one. That's who do you think is going to be on pole at Fruxton? It's a massive, wide open question, that, isn't it? Yeah. Um, Ooh, uh, I think it's going to be Gordon Shedden. <sighs> Judging by testing um, and the fact that he's come back from World Touring Cars, I, 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 I've got my money on Shedden. Oh, I think uh, Josh Cook's going to be on pole. I've I've pencilled Roy Butcher for pole. I don't know if I've just jinxed him or not, but I'll take that play. Colin Turkington. Well, I think, as we know, historically, uh, Thruxton's been very good uh, to the Hondas. Uh, they've, they've always gone very well there. There's a lot of quick cars out there. Um, I think... I think Ash is going to be on pole. At so um, I'm going to stick my neck out. Um, I'm going to go with uh, Flash. I'm going to go with Gordon Shedden. Um, make a bit of a return with a bang. I'm I'm going to have to go because they're, they're all starting with no ballast or anything like that, right? So I think Turkington's going to take it. That was hard. If you... Here's an even harder one. Who do you think is going to win race one? <sighs> Shedden. <laughs> Shedden or Serpington? First race of the season, anything can happen, especially in BTC season. I, it, I don't know. Oh, that's a tricky one. Um, Jake Hill. Shedden. I'm going to stick with Flash. I think um, if he's got that pace to get it on pole, if uh, then uh, he's certainly going to have uh, the pace, you know, with no ballast. I think the winner of race one is going to be, I think it's going to be Jake Hill. Colin Turkington. Yeah, but I'm, I'm going to stick with Colin on that. I've got Rory till the last lap, then a puncture, then Shedden <laughs> comes through. And who do you think's most likely to win more than one race at Fruxton? More than likely to win one, more than one race. Who's most likely to win more than one race? Well, I've got quite a few down for this. I've got Shedden, Turkington, Ash Sutton. It's got to be Colin Turkington. Uh, if it's not Shedden, it's going to be Ash Sutton. Um, Sutton, obviously. Yeah. Um, and Rick Parfit as an outsider. Again, it, it depends on how everyone feels with their new cars, setups, and everything like that. And I think the first one to do it will be Turks at Snetterson. Uh, I'm going to complete the hat trick here and go with Flash. Uh, Mr. 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 Turkington. You know, I'm going to go with Sutton. I think yeah. Sutton might pull it out the bag. He's always good with strategy. Um, 
you know, he, he can adapt to to starting further back and fight his way through the pack if he needs to. Who's got the best livery? Oh, who's got the best livery? I love Rick Parfit's car. Absolutely love it. Yeah. The BMW, the BMW looks good, but um, I do like Rick, so it's going to stand out. Not going to miss him. Yeah, there are quite a few standouts for me, but I'm... Well, I've quite a few black standouts. So there's there's a lot of dark ones, as we know, which I don't think is a bad thing. Uh, for those who don't know, I'm a designer by trade, <laughs> uh, so so this is my this is my area of expertise. I think this might be a popular answer. I'm going to have to go with the Accelerate Motorsport price, um, yeah. you know, the Accelerate trade price cars, guys, and particularly again, I think a lot of people are going to say this. It's got to be path. I'm going to be biased here. Yeah. I'm going to say either. The laser tools. Nicholas Hamilton. It's got to be Kingram, Tom Ingram with the uh, the Ginsters. Yeah. Best livery. Um, we've we've hung around with the Team Hard crew quite a lot this year already, thanks to geography. We are merely minutes apart. Or um, the Team Hard ones, because we had we played a role in it. <laughs> Rick Parfit for me is the standout livery. It, it seems like it's a bit of a meme because it's such a massive amount of against this. Ah, uh, you got to love the Laser Tools boys. Um, so I think I would be shocked if I didn't say that Team Hard's brand new Coopers have the best livery. Isn't it? I mean, what, yeah. a, yeah. what a fantastic looking car. <clears throat> Which team do you think has got the strongest driver lineup? Ooh. I think for. I was like, I've, I've penciled, I've been brave and penciled in MB Motorsport for the independence teams. You know, this one I've given a bit of thought to, and my answer might be quite controversial. Oh, definitely Power Max Racing. Oh, the strongest over. This is really hard. They're they're all they've all got really good drivers, uh, pairings and, and trios as well. There's, I can't call that one, unfortunately. <laughs> My pick might not automatically might not automatically translate into results uh, immediately, but if you want a pair of solid BTCC drivers that have got experience, they know the series inside and out. You can go a lot worse than Adam Morgan and Tom Chilton. Mm. Ooh, there's some good teams out there. Um, do you know what? I think put any two people with Colin Turkington, and that's the best team. But then you've got the the, the the pure wisdom of WSR. Yeah. Um, or you've kind of got the swashbuckling excitement of Accelerate and trade price card. I think the ones that I'm really looking forward to watching is MB Motorsport. I think BMW, to be honest. Um, you've got Colin, obviously, Stephen Jelly and uh, Tom Elephant, Elephant as well. Um, I think overall, they've got the strongest team. I think the strongest squad because of the proven technical ability of the car is WSR. And who do you think is going to be a dark horse this season? Rick Parfit, without a shadow of a doubt. Um, I don't think we'll have any surprises about who will be in the championship, so I'm not going to yeah. not going to do that dark horse. Um, and they're both driving Hondas. I think Jade yeah. is quick and she's in a proven car and... It's solid, and if you look at testing, the cars are doing well. And once she gets used to being in that new car and gets up to the pace of the BTCC, I, I think she's going to do really well. Jake Hill, I haven't even got to think about that one. I've been saying it all summer long, uh, yeah. all summer, all winter long. Oh, well, this person, um, I think, is a fantastic driver. I think in the past, he's been really unlucky. Um, and on media day, he topped the timing. So I think Jack Goff. Yeah. I'm going to go Jade Edwards podium by the end of the season. Um, and then Dan Robo, he's back. Yeah. He's in a he's in a proven car. He's next to he's next to Flash, who is going to you know if your teammate is Gordon Shedden, that's going to push you onto onto another level of performance. I think. I think Tom Ingram's going to be a dark horse this season. I know he's changed teams. Uh, and some people see that as a bit of a, a step back from where he was. But, uh, you know, he's uh, he's brought those cars that he had on him by himself forwards. And now he's got a team behind him uh, with teammates. That should help him 
Dark Horse, I think it's going to be Carl Bordley. I'm going to say Jake Hill. What are you most looking forward to about the new season? Oh, for us to start, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Two things. One, the hope that we get to take our trade still so we can, us and fans can actually go. Mm. But the thing that I actually will look out for is Jack Goff in a Cupra. Um, and I'm going to uh, Thruxton on the 29th of August. So uh, really looking forward to that. Oh, absolutely everything. Um, can't wait for it to get started. Um, the amazing coverage on ITV, um, hopefully, fingers crossed, being trackside and just anything and everything uh, related to BTCC. I'm really looking forward to going back yeah. uh, to, to, to tracks. Just being able to get back trackside. I'm just the same as a lot of people, in, uh, excited to get back trackside. Uh, I'm looking forward to Turkington's fifth championship and Plato's 100th win. And there we have it. That was the fans' prediction for the first Quick Fit British Touring Car round of the season. And you're probably wondering what my predictions were. And I guess I've not really got away with just asking the questions. I suppose I've got to answer them as well. Obviously, I've had a little bit of time to think as I've asked for the, the, the fans. Um, so I'm going to say my name is Louis Hedge. My favourite driver is Andrew Jordan. But in terms of drivers on the current grid, it's got to be Jason Plato. Now, on pole position, I think it will be Gordon Shedden. And I think he'll be able to win race one. I think if anyone can win more than one race at Fruxton, it will be Colin Turkington. I think that Tom Ingram has got the best livery. And Team BMW has got the strongest driver lineup. In terms of Dark Horse, I think Dan Lloyd is going to be the Dark Horse of the season. And I'm really looking forward to getting back to trackside at my home event, Setterton, and making more interviews and videos across the season. And remember, if you want to get involved with the fans' prediction next time round, please, please get in contact with me. We'd love to hear your predictions, and it's great fun. Now we're coming to the end of the show and as you probably saw in the introduction at the start the final segment is a little interview with Michael Kreese. Now this is filmed before it was sadly announced that he won't be competing in this year's British touring cars. Now I'm, I was obviously really upset about this news as was a lot of other fans so I feel it's still important to keep this in. The interview you know, follows him making a few predictions and what it's like to drive Thruxton as a circuit as a driver um, which is still very relevant and I think he gives a great insight into what it's like so I hope you enjoy and yeah. Now first round at Fruxton, how, how would you sum up um, Fruxton as a, as a track? Uh, it's a tough one I mean when I first ever went there in 2019 in the Passat I mean that was the first time I'd ever been there so my first really? ever go around or my only ever go should I say around Bruxton is in a touring car really um so I, I don't know what it's like to drive anything else around <laughs> there but uh yeah not 2019 I was a few seconds off the pace obviously as you can imagine because it's a very uh um skillful track as well as yeah. ballsy track if you like so um you know, it, you have to be precise, and you know, with an experience in touring car, going there for my first time, it was it was a very difficult challenge. But I accepted that at the time, and I knew I knew where I was going to be, and I, I still done all right that weekend. I think yeah. I still was still was up up there a little bit off the back of the grid, so um, I was quite happy. And then I was dreading going back there in the Honda in 2020, <laughs> and uh, I was saying to Josh Cook, like, you know, I'm a few few seconds off the pace around there, and um, he said, honestly. You know the the Honda FK8 um, is really settled around there, and it's really suited to that track. And uh, yeah, obviously went out FP1. I was up there. FP2. I was yeah. up there. Qualified. I think I qualified tenth or ninth, and uh, had three top top ten finishes, if you like. But I, yeah. I, obviously, last race I was I was in seventh with Turkington behind and Matt Neal in front, and and everyone knows I got a punch on the last yeah. lap. So it's um, 
you know, it was still a fantastic weekend for me at Froxton. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, you mentioned how, how settled the Honda is around there and people, you know, often say that Froxton's a, a Honda hunting ground, really. It, would you say um, Froxton is the strongest circuit for the Hondas? Um, yeah, I think I think there's a couple of tracks that suit front wheel drive, like Silverstone, for instance, yeah. at Media Day, that was very well suited to us and uh, and, and 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 Froxton for sure. Um, but then you go to places like Knockhill Hill um, and, and Croft, maybe um, you know, very very rear wheel drive circuit. So you're going to have rough with the smooth, and that's what touring car is all about, you know, and that's why. Some tracks you do good, some tracks you're struggling, but you've got to just know when you're struggling so you take them points and, and then you've got to capitalise on things when when things are going right. But I do think Fruxton is is very good. Honda have always won there, I think, you know, um, pretty much. And uh, Josh Cook's always won in the last three or four years he's been there. So um, he wants to keep that going. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, you, you previously mentioned um, how you did get a puncture last year. It's the fastest circuit on the calendar. Have you got to be really careful with those tyres and not not uh, wear them out too too soon on in the race? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's very abrasive around there. Um, very old school. Uh, it's the only track that we use the hard tyres on this year. Um, so that goes to prove, obviously, how abrasive it, it is. Um, and I just think, you know, with the with the two slow, slow speed sections, um, there's some quite big sausage curbs in there mm. and... Uh, and I think, um, it, you know, towards the end of the race, you certainly can't now that I've learned my lesson, start nibbling away more and more at them towards the end of the race as the tyres are, tires are like, I've, I've done a whole race distance. But um, Goodyear have done a great job with the tyres, um, you know, over the last few years. I think if you remember a few years ago before I started touring car or before I even started racing, I think there was a few punches around there. Like everyone yeah. just like dropping like flies at the end of the race. And um, but. Yeah, good year of, of, of developed their tyre and it's a, it's a real good tyre, the hard tyre around there. So uh, we all should be fine. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, we've spoke about how difficult it can be. What is your favourite part about, about Froxton? I don't know if I've got a favourite part of Froxton. <laughs> <laughs> the, slow, the slow bit, I think. Uh, it gives you a chance to catch your breath a little bit because it's seen, uh, honestly, like in my head, obviously, like, you know, I, 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 I play things through, but I go out the back and as I come out of the first uh, the first section, you know, the right, left, right, um, at Seagrave, I think, or whatever it's called, and uh, and then you're heading towards you're heading towards out the back and, and you've got Goodwood at Noble and Goodwood and you're just yeah. thinking, ah, oh, here we go again. <laughs> and like you just sort of go into there. <clears throat> I mean, Tom Chilton, to be fair to him, last year I was looking at his data and he clicked up to sixth gear just before he went in and kept really? it absolutely pinned all the way around the uh, around Noble, which was which was quite, I didn't quite get to there, but um, yeah, he was, it was quite impressive to see that. And um, yeah, and then, and then, and then you, you get through them too, and then you got church. And yeah. you think, oh, and like, you literally like sink into your chair as you're going through church, you're just holding on, and like, you come out the other side, and you're like, oh, I've made it. And then, yeah. and then it's the cruise down the back straight, and, uh, and then you have a little bit of a slow, slow bit again, and then you just sort of breathe a little bit, and then you, you're ready for, ready for noble again. So, yeah, uh, yeah my favorite bits are the last, last corners and the first corners for sure. Oh, you know, it's, it's an incredible circuit, but, um, predictions. Who do you think is going to be on pole? Or is it easier to just put all the names in a hat and, and pick one out? It's going to be close. You know what? Um, I think it I think it could be out of out of Cook and Shedden. Yeah. Um I think I think Shedden showed real real pace at Media Day. I'd like to think a Honda's going to be on the front row. Um, Jason Plato, yeah, massive, yeah. massive chance. Um, he was on the front row there when he, I think, in 2019. Yeah. Um, so you know he he's got a very quick machine around there, uh, and that Vauxhall looks brilliant, to be honest. Um, so I I I think you know I mean because the, there's no weight. Can the BMWs, yeah. you know, can Colin Turkington string one together 
can Rory butcher? R- Rory seems he's struggling a little bit to get to grips with the Toyota at the moment. If, if you know, I'm only saying from what I, I can see at the moment, I don't know what he's been up to testing-wise. So he could have run in maximum weight or, you know, whatever. But he looks like he's just not quite there with the car at the moment. Um, and Tom Ingram... Yes, I still think he's developing the car as well. So I, yeah. I, I do think it's probably a cook, a cook, Shedden or or, or Plato or or Turkington. Um, do you would you say it's definitely more of a front wheel drive circuit than rear wheel drive? Yeah, I mean, yes, I do think it is. But every time we've gone there, the the BMW uh, or or the rear wheel drive cars have had weight. In. Yeah. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see when the weight comes up. It's going to be really interesting to see where the real drive cars are there. I mean, traditionally, yes, you have to say it's front wheel drive, but I, I, I'd like to see it. this is going to be very, very interesting. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think this year, especially, we've got a really good, exciting mix of drivers. Um, which team do you reckon's got the, the strongest uh, overall package and driver lineup? Uh, it's a tough one. I think I think you'd go. You'd be hard pushed to beat BMW this year. Um, uh, they've got a very very strong squad. You know, Jelly's been in the in the BMW for years as well, and he's just stepped up to a bit better machinery this year. And yeah. Oliphant's coming on leaps and bounds, and, and Turkington's a class act. But you know, I think. Sicily, if they can get that BMW working, um, you know, to have Morgan, who's probably, you know, arguably so underrated on that grid. He, yeah. he's, he's one, you know, he's, he technically he's one of the best out there. And, um, you know, Anton Chilton in that car, you know, that's a very strong package. And I think you'll see, you'll see that throughout the year. Um, Dan Lloyd again. I don't know too much about him. And, and Plato, very strong pairing. It seems to seems to be out of the box. But yeah, I think that they're the, you know, Shedden and Robottom again. Uh, hopefully Robottom can get there to help him, help Shedden out. But again, he's got his own goals. And so I don't think that's fair to say they're as strong as BMW or, or yeah. Vauxhall. But, um, you know, even the guys coming in at the back, I mean, you know, Parfit and, and Smith and, uh, you know, all the new ones, Jade Edwards, all these guys, that's going to be a great battle to fasten. Yeah fascinating to watch uh, all, all them new drivers like going for the Jack Sears um, and obviously you know Jack Sears has been a big part of my career and um, I'm always going to keep one eye on that and uh, it, it's, it's going to be great to watch to be fair. It's uh, great to catch up and, and hear your prediction. Cheers mate, thanks very much. No worries. Well there you have it, that's the end of the show. Thank you to Michael Priest. Um, for for chatting with me, thank you to Mark Wagstaff uh, for, for chatting with me as well. Thank you to all the BTCC fans out there, my fellow fans, for taking part in the fans' prediction. Now, if you did enjoy the video, please, please do subscribe to the channel. We're working hard to keep on building and bring out new content. If you guys have any suggestions or anything you'd like me to maybe look into, please, you know, let me know in the in the comment section. That's all we've got time for, uh, for for this episode, round one, Ruxton. I hope you all enjoy it. I've been your host, Louis Hedge, and thanks for watching.